Time is 7.01. Call to order the Torrington, the City of Torrington Planning and Zoning Commission meeting for June 12th, 2024. Uh, attendance is in, in person or by Zoom. We're in room 218, 140 Main Street, Torrington, Connecticut. Instructions for Zoom are available online at www.torringtonct.org slash Zoom. There's a link there to join the meeting. Call in at 1-646-558. 8656, meeting ID 795-950-7035, passcode 907148. Uh, moving on to agenda item two, serving on the attendance, serving on the commission this evening, Jim Babinski, Donovan Riley, Diane Carroll, Donna Greco, serving remotely is Tom Tullman, also in attendance is myself, Greg Mealy, and our city planner, Jeremy Leifert. Moving on to agenda item number three, minutes for approval A for March 20th, 2020. 24. Do I have a motion? I, I just have a concern, Go ahead. question, whatever. My, in my packet, the even number pages were not in there. Really? Yeah. Did you flip on the back? I did. I flipped, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> my oh. thing. <laughs> well, that's interesting. So I don't know if you want to table that. Or... Yeah, I guess we'll. And then May 15th was not in the Maybe packet. Not. We know that. Okay. Yeah. Got him. I have a full packet. Yeah, I do. Of minutes. Jim doesn't. Yeah, I no, I know. Okay. All right. I don't know how that. No. Some didn't. Some didn't. And three. So three some five. printed on the back. You want to just table okay. it again? Yeah. All right. We're I gonna. Got, table. I got all the odds. No evens. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're gonna table the minutes for approval for March 20, 2024. <clears throat> Time is 7.02, moving on to agenda item number four, public hearings. Public hearings beginning at 7 p.m. June 12, 2024, City Hall Auditorium, room 218, 140 Main Street, Torrington, Connecticut. A, proposed zoning regulation amendment. Applicant Layla Campo, proposal, amend section 5.15, signage for mobile home parks and recreational vehicle parks. <laughs> Serving on the commission this evening is Jim Babinski, Donovan Riley, Diane Carroll, Donna Greco, Tom Tullman, myself, Greg Mealy, also in attendance is our city planner, Jeremy Leifert. Commissioner Greco, do you have a legal notice, please? I do. City of Torrington Planning and Zoning Commission legal notice. The Planning and Zoning Commission has scheduled public hearings on the following applications on Wednesday, June 12, 2024, in the City Hall Auditorium, room 218, 140 Main Street, Torrington, Connecticut. One, proposed Torrington Zoning Regulation Amendment. Applicant Le Layla Campo, proposal, amend section 5.15, signage for mobile home park and recreational vehicle park. Time of hearing, 7 p.m. Thank you. Is the applicant in attendance? Yes. Uh, good evening, Chairman and Commission. My name is Martin Connor. Uh, I'm a consulting planner with over 35 years of experience, 22 of them sitting right next to you as city planner in Torrington. Uh, I'm a member of the American Institute of Certified Planners as well. Um, this evening, I'm asking that you amend the zoning regulations to allow an increase in the maximum sign area and sign height for mobile home parks and recreational vehicle parks in residential zoning districts. My client, Layla Campo, is developing the Sky Ridge Trails Campground at 232 Clug Hill Road and realizes the current signage regulations would not permit a sign adequate in height and sign area to properly mark the driveway entrance for her campground. Currently, the maximum sign area is 20 square feet uh, and maximum height is five feet. It is important that the signage for a mobile home park and recreational vehicle park be more visible than the typical business sign in a residential zone. We're proposing an increase in the maximum sign area to 32 square feet and a maximum sign height to 12 feet. We feel this will be a safety improvement it is difficult for large recreational vehicles to turn around should they pass the driveway. Uh, uh, and we don't want to inconvenience the neighbors. 
by a vehicle trying to turn around in their driveway. We uh, propose to allow one sign no larger than 32 square feet in size and no taller than 12 feet in height by zoning permit. The current business signage in a residential zone is allowed by zoning permit. In my opinion, the proposed amendment is consistent with the 2023 Torrington Plan of Conservation and Development. Business develop sign section uh, 8-1 uh, Sky Ridge Trails Campground will be a tourist attraction and the plan encourages the promotion of tourism. I've attached uh, a proposed amendments to section 5.15 of the zoning regulations, which include the increased height. Now, uh, I have met with uh, city planner, Jeremy Leifert, and he did uh, have a suggestion for adding to the use section 5.15.5 table one for a mobile home RV park signage. Uh, and we would certainly think that's appropriate. I will say that uh, we looked at the times I was city planner, we looked at uh, signage many times over the period of 22 years but we really never had a recreational or RV park come before us. That the regulation that was originally written into the regulations was for uh, a YMCA camp many, many years ago. And this is the really the first new like RV campground as far as we know in 30 years or more in uh, the Northwest corner. Any commissioners have any questions at this point? I'm, I'm just curious what the lighting situation is mm -hmm. going to be on this sign. Well, currently right now, um, there is no, you can't have an internally lit sign in the resident residential zone. And uh, uh, Layla Campo has been working with right way signs on a design. And she was uh, liking a design that came up with that was uh, internally lit, uh, thought it would provide some visibility and it was artistically drawn. So uh, we would ask that you not make any changes to the what's currently allowed, currently uh, uh, allowed in the residential zone for a business sign could be internally lit or lit from above, but clearly it has to, it, it's, Got to conform with your current regulations as far as lighting goes. Has it solar be... been per approached? Pardon me? Has solar lighting been approached just for that sign? Uh, I, I don't know whether that's that could be part oh, of it. It's just the power yeah. source, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know whether she's considered sure that. You probably have power available at yeah. the location. <clears throat> Anybody else? Not All right, Jeremy, you got your. Uh, Layla Campo has filed an application to amend the text of the zoning regulations, section 5.15, to allow freestanding signage of up to 32 square feet and 12 feet in height for mobile home parks and RV parks. Our office consulted with the applicant to draft a regulation that meets both the needs of the applicants and public safety and visual aesthetics concerns of the city for signage. The attached, attached draft amendment is proposed as follows. One, section 5.15.2, modify the freestanding sign definition to add new 7.D to allow maximum sign area of 32 square feet and maximum height of 12 feet. Two, add new section 5.15.4.I to set maximum sign area for mobile home park and RV park signage at 32 square feet. In addition to the above proposal, uh, one, I would recommend that the applicant add a use to section 5.15.5 table one for mobile home RV park signage to allow signage approvals by zoning permit in residential zones. Staff may add this revision to the application with the consent of the applicant. Uh, two, the applicant has verbally requested to staff that the commission consider not restricting internally lighted signage for this section 
and allow signs to be lighted either externally or internally. If not restricted, sign lighting would defer to the existing section 5.15.6.A governing sign illumination. This sign proposal as presented does place further restrictions, does place further restrictions on the illumination of mobile home and RV park signage. Uh, other staff comments, Northwest Hills Council of Governments, Rista Malanka, AICP, NHCOG Director of Community and Economic Development, in a letter to the city planner dated April 19th, 2024, submitted the following comments. NHCOG staff finds the proposed amendment not to have any apparent conflicts with the Northwest Hills Plan of Conservation and Development or intermunicipal impacts. Assistant City Planner, Assistant City Planner Nate Nardi Cyrus, in an email to the City Planner dated May 3rd, 2024, offered the following comments. The proposed subsection for maximum total sign area should be 5.154I, not 5.54I. Water Pollution Control Authority, in an email to the City Planner, from Cheryl Lewis, WPCA Administrative Assistant, dated April 19th, 2024. It was indicated that WPCA has no comments on this application. The application was not referred to the Economic Development Office or Architectural Review Committee for comment. No comments were received from the Fire Marshal's Office, Building Department, Police Traffic, or City Engineer on the proposed amendment. The proposed amendments are generally supported by the City Plan of Conservation and Development, the proposed regulation also remains within the regulatory scheme for lighted signage, furthering the goals of reducing light pollution in Section 6, Community Character, in Section 8, Business Development, a subsection titled Continue to Promote Tourism encourages creative methods to bring tourism to the city. Advertising signage can be one method to promote, to promote new and existing businesses. I recommend approval of this proposed regulation amendment to Section 5.15 of the zoning regulations as presented. Thank you, Jeremy. So do we have any questions? Just a comment on the internally lit sign. Typically that signage is going to be more consistent, I believe, than externally lit, that a fixture is going to swing out of the way and be facing another direction and so forth. So obviously if your uh, client is looking pretty internally lit, obviously, you know, aesthetically pleasing and not, you know, super bright, obviously in right. compliance with the regulations. You know? Exactly. So we, we typically have the architectural review committee look at, look at, uh, you know, major signage as well. So Perfect. signage changes. Tom, you got anything? I'm good. Okay. I was going to say something about the internally lit just like you did. So. Okay. Thank you. I'll go to the public. Would anyone like to speak in favor of this application? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. That includes anyone on Zoom. Being none, would anyone like to speak in opposition of this application? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. And that includes anyone on Zoom. Being none, the time is 714. I declare this public hearing closed. We'll make the decision. Right now. I'd like to make a motion to approve proposed zoning regulation amendment. Applicant Layla Campo proposal amend section 5.15 sign regulations, freestanding signage for mobile home and recreational vehicle parks. The effective date of the regulation change slash amendment shall be the day after publication of the legal notice of decision in the local newspaper. I have a motion. I have a second. Second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Good luck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Have a good night. All right. The time is 7.15. Moving on to agenda item number 4B, public hearing. Uh, 1260 Winston Road, assessor map 237, block 004, lot 002, applicant Dave Echuk, Connecticut Browse and Lashes Academy, LLC. Proposal is change of use to vocational school, section 3.1, subsection 2.08, with accessory beauty parlor use in an I industrial zone. Serving on the commission this evening is Jim Babinski, Donovan Riley, Diane Carroll, Donna Greco, Tom Tellman, myself, Greg Mealy. Also in, atten in attendance is our city planner, Jeremy Leifert. Commissioner Greco, do you have a legal notice, please? I do. 
Planning and Zoning Commission has scheduled public hearings on the following applications on Wednesday, June 12, 2024 in the City Hall Auditorium, room 218, 140 Main Street, Torrington, Connecticut, 1260 Winstead Road, Assessor's Map 237, Block 004, Lot 002, Applicant Dave Echuk, Connecticut Browse and Lashes Academy, LLC, Proposal Special Exception, Change Abuse to Vocational School, Section 3.1, Subsection 2.08, with Accessory Beauty Parlor Use in an I Industrial Zone. Time of hearing after the first hearing at 7 p.m. Thank you. Please state your name and address for the record, sir. My name is, it's David Echuk. Yeah, let's Steve raise the mic up Road, a little bit. Northfield, Connecticut, 06778. Thank you. Were the, uh, was the sign posted for the time allotted in our regulations? Yes, it was. Okay, and we have the green card submitted. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, please I want to let us know what you're trying to do. Uh, for hearing us uh, tonight. I want to thank everyone that's on the Board and Commission uh, right. that we're here tonight. I just want to start by saying, in January of 2020, we opened an eyelash business in Torrington. Uh, almost immediately, we got shut down by COVID. Um, we um, we stood strong, we persevered, and became a successful business. Um, our dream has always been to expand into a vocational school. Um, at the location we were at, we, we didn't have very in terms of area and facility, so um, we moved to 1260 Winston Road that has everything we need to have a school uh, as outlined in the drawing that you see in front of you. Um, so that's has always been the dream of, of myself and, and, and this is my wife. Her name is Pinzer and Amsam and, and she'll be the act actually one of the instructors at the school. Um, we believe that it's going to benefit our community as well as help us realize our dream of opening a vocational school in that location. Um, we have been in contact with another academy that reached out to us and would like to partner with us. We're considering that right now. Um, they have they've have open schools in about half a dozen other locations uh, other than here, and they'd like to incorporate us as well as Torrington into that plan. So I, I think it would be helpful to everyone and sort of a benefit to our town, our community, and uh, obviously us as well. Um, so I've laid out the outline of the course and uh, what the plan is for it. It's a six week uh, endeavor. It's 54 hours, meets uh, three times a week. Um, I, I've got the cost analysis there as well. Um, what it entails and uh, a few incidentals that you can look at there. Um, I also have a email from the other academy asking us to partner with them. I don't know if you'd be interested in seeing that. I, I made copies of it. You have an extra copy? I, 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 I do. We got it. Yeah, sorry. That's fine. I, I had another one in there. Yep. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Well, this is a new one. I just copied this one today from, oh. from the academy. That okay. Talks yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Jeremy, you want to dive into your memo? Sure. Please, thank you. <laughs> Dave Echuk has filed an application on behalf of Connecticut Browse and Lashes Academy, LLC, to change the use at 1260 Winstead Road. Assessor's Map 237, Block 004, Lot 002, to allow a vocational training facility with an accessory personal services use. The property is one acre in area and is located in the I industrial zone. Per the documents submitted with the application, the current use of the space within the property is, is an insurance broker, office, and child care facility. The requested special exception approval will allow for the use of the proposed space to be changed to a primary use as a vocational learning establishment with a personal services beauty parlor business. The proposed vocational use is allowed by special exception in the in I in the I industrial zone per section 3.1 of 
subsection 2.08 of the zoning regulations. The beauty parlor use is allowed as an accessory use to the vocational use. A site plan application, number 1510, has been submitted along with the special exception application. A public hearing for the special exception and a new site plan approval for the property is required for this proposed project. The review of this application is guided by the site plan requirements of section 8.4 and general special exception review standards in section 8.2. The property is fully developed and no changes are proposed to the exterior of the property. The commission may waive part or all of the requirements for the submission of an engineered site plan under zoning regulation section 8.4.4. In the application packet, the applicant has provided a narrative with uses and parking requirements for the site, assessors mapping, 2016 aerial photos of the site, city GIS zoning maps, and floor layouts identifying the individual businesses. In reviewing the, the application plans and documents submitted, I have the following comments. One, per document submitted with the application, the existing parking on site is, comp is conforming for this proposed change. Two, I recommend that, com that the commission waive the requirement for a full site plan per section 8.4.4 for this application since there's no interior work or exterior work proposed on the property. Three, in my opinion, the proposed use and location is generally compatible with the neighborhood, the surrounding uses, and the historic uses of the property. Four, the commission is required to close the public hearing on this application no later than July 17th, 2024. Other staff comments, economic development, William Wallach, City of Torrington Economic Development Director, submitted comments on June 4th, 2024, and has no issues with the project. Assistant City Planner, Nate Nardi Cyrus, Assistant City Planner, submitted the following comments on June 12th, 2024. Wetlands, there are no regulated wetlands or watercourses mapped on or in the vicinity of the subject property that would require wetlands review for this proposal. Therefore, no wetlands permits are required prior to this application. This constitutes a favorable wetlands report for this application. Landscaping, no landscape plan is required for this application. Lighting, no exterior lighting is associated with the change in use under review. However, any new lighting must conform with section 5.17 of the zoning regulations. We encourage the use of products approved by the International Dark Sky Association. Signage, Temporary signs currently installed <clears throat> and other non-compliant signs may be maintained on site for 30 days after opening. After this period, all signage must conform to section 5.15 of the zoning regulations. Please obtain, obtain the necessary sign permits prior to the end of the 30 day period. Conservation, this application was not referred to the Conservation Commission for review. Architectural Review Committee, this project was not referred to the ARC for comment. Engineering, Paul Cunzins, city engineer, responded on June 5th, 2024, and has no comments on the project. Police traffic, police traffic sergeant Dustin Baldus submitted comments on June 5th, 2024, and has no issues with the project. WPCA, Edward Tausey, WPCA administrator, submitted the following comments on June 5th, 2024. A SSDP, Water Pollution Control Authority, Sanitary Sewer Discharge Permit application is required. During that process, more details will be needed. Water Company, James Myers of Aquarian Water, responded on June 6, 2024, and has no comments on the project. Building, Building Official Kevin Gillette, responded on June 4, 2024, and has no comments on the project. The Fire Marshal's Office and Torrington Area Health offered no comments on the application. In making a decision on the special exception, the commission should evaluate the information submitted by the applicant, other information submitted for the application record, and comments and questions received at the public hearing to make a decision on the approval or denial of the application. The commission should refer to section 8.2, special exception for review standards, as well as any other regulation sections mentioned within section 8.2. I believe the following standards from these sections are relevant to the commission's review of the project based on the information submitted for the application, as well in, as well as anticipated testimony and comments to be received at the public hearing. One, 8.2.2.B.2, location. The location of the proposed special exception use is such that the proximity of the proposed special exception use 
will not have a detrimental effect upon any church, school, library, playground, or similar facility found in section 2.00 to 2.60 of the table of permitted uses. And the number of similar existing special exception uses in the vicinity is such that the granting of the proposed special exception will not be detrimental to the public health, safety, and welfare. Conclusion, the commission may close the public hearing, begin deliberation on the application, and conduct a thorough review of the meeting record, testimony, and application exhibits at this meeting, or continue the hearing should additional information or testimony be necessary. If the public hearing is closed, using the standards for special exception review, section 8.2, the commission may make a motion to approve or deny the application at this meeting. If the public hearing is closed, the commission is allowed 65 days to make a decision on the application. The commission may deliberate and make a decision using the factors outlined in this memo or other factors in the zoning regulations and, ap and, and applicable statutes at this meeting or table deliberations and decisions to the next commission meeting. Per review and comment by city staff and testimony received at the public hearing of June 12th, 2024, I would recommend approval of special exception number 24-03 and site plan 1510, 1260 Winstead Road, Assessor's Map 237, Block 004, Lot 002, to approve a change of use to allow a vocational training facility and accessory personal services use with the following approval conditions and recommendations. One, per section 8.4.4 of the zoning regulations, the commission waives the requirement for the submission of a site plan since there is no exterior work proposed on the property. Two, the applicant shall follow the comments of Assistant City Planner Nate Nardi Cyrus regarding temporary and permanent signage and future lighting. Three, the applicant shall follow comments of Edward Tausey, WPCA Administrator, outlined in his June 5th, 2024 application comments regarding sewer discharge permitting requirements. Four, the Planning and Zoning Commission finds that the proposed use location and site design is compatible with the neighborhood and surrounding uses and is protective of the health, safety, and welfare of the cities of the citizens of the city of Torrington for a granting of a special exception approval. Five, a certificate of special exception shall be filed with the city clerk prior to occupying the property for this use. Thank you. Do any commissioners have any comments or questions? Two questions. Go ahead, Doc. If you're offering day and night classes, well, it's three days a week. It's 54 hours. Each class is uh, approximately three hours in duration um, over a course of six weeks. So um, usually they're, they're night courses that are, that are you know, from afternoon into night, mm -hmm. whatever encompasses that, that time limit of three hours. And you'll also be offering services to the public? Oh, yes, absolutely. Anybody else? Tom, you all set? Yeah, I'm all set. Thank you. I'll go to the public. Would anyone like to speak in favor of this application? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. That includes anyone on Zoom. Being none, would anyone like to speak in opposition of this application? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, including anyone on Zoom. you have anything else to summarize or you're good, sir? I want to thank you all for hearing me out and um, I appreciate your time. Thank you. thank you. Time is 729. I declare this public hearing closed. Go ahead, Donna. I'd like to make a motion to approve special exception 24-03 and site plan 1510 applicant Davey Chucks, Connecticut Browse and Lashes Academy, LLC, location 1260 Winston Road, proposal change of use to vocational school section 3.1 subsection 2.08 with accessory beauty parlor use. Subject to the following conditions. One, for section 8.4.4 of the zoning regulations, the commission waives the requirements for the submission of a site plan since there is no exterior work proposed on the property. Two, the applicant shall follow the comments of assistant planner Nate Nardi Cyrus regarding temporary and permanent signage and future lighting. Three, the applicant shall follow comments of Edward Towsey, WPCA administrator, outlined in his June 5th, 2024 application comments regarding sewer discharge permitting requirements. Four, the Planning and Zoning Commission finds that the proposed use, location, and site design is compatible with the neighborhood 
and surrounding uses and is protective of the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of the city of Torrington for granting for the granting of a special exception approval. Five, a certificate of special exception shall be filed with the city clerk prior to occupying the property for its use. I have a motion to have a second. Second the motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So move. Good luck, folks. Moving on to agenda item number uh, four. Again, public hearings beginning at 7 p.m. June 26, 2024, City Hall Auditorium, room 218, 140 Main Street, Torrington, Connecticut. Will be C, proposed zoning regulation amendment applicant, City of Torrington Planning and Zoning Commission. Proposal amend sections 2.0 definitions, sections 3.1 table of uses, and add new section 6.5.4 temporary shelter facilities temporary and permanent shelters for the unhoused. Uh, public hearing beginning at 7 p.m. July 17, 2024, City Hall Auditorium, room 218, 140 Main Street, Torrington, Connecticut. D, proposed zoning regulation amendment, applicant City of Torrington Planning and Zoning Commission, proposal amendments to landscaping regulations, section 5.11.1, purpose and intent, section 5.11.2, general requirements, Section 5.11.5, specific requirements, and Section 5.11.6, enforcement. Moving on to agenda item number five, old business, we have none. Moving on to agenda item number six, new business A, commission referral and review under CGS 8-24, proposed lease of city property located at Cook Street, assessor map 116, block 020, Lot 008 for public slash private parking development. Jeremy's pulling up some prints for us. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, what we're proposing here and requesting a favorable recommendation for the city to enter into a public-private lease agreement for the property located um, in the assessors as, um, oh, I got the wrong one. <laughs> um, Cook Street property, um, map 116, block 020 lot 008. This property was purchased by the city of Torrington in 1984. Um, in 2001, as part of the Coe Memorial Park Master Plan, it was proposed that this parcel would be developed and added as a second entrance to the park and provide additional parking. <laughs> this It was never constructed. This current property sits a vacant grass uh, area. The current parking uh, at Cole Memorial Park is approximately 18 spaces on site. Uh, we have um, done different recreational evaluations. Um, those were abandoned. Um, the development, the lease of the property with a public-private partnership would allow for the adjoining two adjacent properties to be developed as a uh, joint parking lot for use by the city as a public parking lot and for the um, property owner adjacent um, 126 South Main Street LLC. So the city is requesting a favorable recommendation for um, to enter into and negotiate a lease, a public private public private partnership lease for this property. This is the parcel behind the old Bank of America building. Yes, it is. <clears throat> Any other commissioners have any questions? No. Yep. At their uh, May 20th, 2024 meeting, City Council voted to forward the above referenced referral to the Planning and Zoning Commission for their review under Connecticut General Statute Section 8-24, 
which requires commission review and report for consistency with the city plan of conser conservation and development for any proposal to locate, relocate, substantially improve, acquire land for, abandon, sell, or lease any airport, park, playground, school, or other municipally owned property or public building. Um, I've underlined lease and municipally, <laughs> municipally owned property. Um, as stated in the memorandum attached from Ray Drew, Public Works Director to City Council, the subject property would be would be leased and developed into parking by a private developer through a public-private partnership. Parking constructed on this property would be public parking for the primary purpose to be utilized for events at Coe Park, Fusenich Park, and the Armory. To illustrate the possible future configuration of the parking on the property, a survey has been submitted titled Property Topographic Survey, prepared for PAC Group LLC, 112, 118, 126, and 138 South Main Street, 30 Cook Street, and Co. Place, Torrington, Connecticut, by Berkshire Surveying LLC, Phantom, Connecticut, dated April 15th, 2024. The proposed lease area of 0 0.22 acres of city property complies with the zoning regulations and is consistent with the plan of conservation and development. In chapter seven, downtown and neighborhoods, one action item is to promote easy parking, while chapter 12 of the POCD transportation encourages the city to provide for a comprehensive transportation system which includes providing adequate off-street parking facilities. I recommend that the Planning and Zoning Commission vote to make a favorable recommendation and report to City Council under the requirements of CGS 8-24 regarding the above reference city property lease. Thank you, Jeremy. Ray, what's the typical lease term on something like this? Um, they vary. We have lease terms from 20 years to 99 years. Um, we would anticipate this. This would probably be in the range of a 50-year lease. Okay. Thank you. Um, that would be have to be negotiated. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? So the only entry would be from Cook Street? Yes. With the redevelopment of the old B B uh, bank building, um, that parking behind the bank building um, would be restricted to that particular property. So they... Uh, ingress and egress from the parking lot would be off of Cook Street. Okay. There would be no pass through at all from the bank to the new property? Well, there, I mean, what exists there now would still exist, um, but there would be, no, as far as I know, the developer is not proposing a designated pass through. Okay. Will there also be a permit required parking like there is across the street from the pack group building? Um, no, not well. I mean, we would have to negotiate the terms of that lease, but the, from the city perspective, we're not anticipating that would be permitted public parking. Okay. And we would not install, we have no plans to install metered parking as well. Okay. My next question. We, we would also have, we would also have future review of this as a site plan application too. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anybody else? Just need a motion on that. Yes, we do. Yeah, there's a. Uh, you got it, Donna. Donna. Thank you. I'd like to make a favorable report to City Council, location Cook Street, Assessor's Map 116, uh, Block 020, Lot 008, Proposal CGS 8 24, Review for a Proposed Lease of City Land, 0.22 acres. <laughs> for a public-private partnership for future parking lot construction. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. All right, moving on to agenda item number 6B, 277 Winthrop Street, Assessor's Map, 124 Block 005, Lot 001, Applicant, City of Torrington, Raymond Drew, Public Works Director, Proposal Site Plan Applicant, Application number 1506, construction of 11,000 square foot concrete skate park and associated site work. Go ahead, Ray. Um, so as you may or may not be aware, um, as part of the construction of the high, new high school, middle school complex, um, their need for additional parking um, 
resulted in the dismantling and removing of the the park, the skate park that existed uh, at Elise Bessie Park. Um, so after you know looking at you know the needs of the community, what the you know we did several workshops, you know what the community was looking for, um, and the vote of the Park and Rec Commission to reinstall and construct a new park at Elise Best Park. Um, so what we're requesting is um, this, as you mentioned, this would be an 11,000 square foot concrete park, which would be much <clears throat> more modern, more robust than the original uh, park that was uh, across the street. Um, so that's what we're requesting is the approval of the site plan application um, for the construction of um, this 11,000 square foot park. The thing I would add to this, but due to budgetary constraints, the as you've seen in the maps, the basketball court. Um, it, this was originally for that. I don't. Yeah, this was originally proposed as a skate park and the reconstruction of the basketball court. Um, so the portion of the basketball court has been removed from the initial phase. Um, so what we would then propose to do is reconstruct the basketball court uh, and phase two adjacent to the skate park, but at a later date. And that'd be a full size court? Uh, yes, the commission, uh, the Park and Rec Commission has stressed that they would like, they want a full size court. Uh, we could only, the budgeting that allowed only a half court. Um, so it was uh, determined to remove the court entirely at this point in time funding became available to install full size court. So there is room in phase two to accomplish that. There is. Any idea when phase two would happen? Um, well, depending on approval of the, well, we got the budgets approved. So we have the funds have been approved by uh, the board of finance um, in our city real estate budget. And um, so we're anticipating, we're in the process of having that full-size basketball court designed. So our goal would be to start construction on that in likely the spring of 25. And as you see the map that's shown there, where the temporary stockpile is and the the entrance and the tracking pad, that's where the basketball court would go. So it'll be going the opposite direction. It will go the opposite now. direction. Yeah, it's going different orientation than it is now. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, Any other questions? And no. not doing anything to the existing playscape that's there, correct? That is correct. We are not uh, disturbing the existing playscape or any of the pool, splash pad, or any of the pavilions or anything. Just the area that where the basketball court is and the old volleyball courts. Okay. Why don't you dive into your memo, please? Okay. <clears throat> Ray Drew, City of Torrington Public Works Director, has filed an application for construction of a new skate park, revised basketball court, and associated site work at Bessie Park, 277 Winthrop Street, Assessor Map 124, Block 005, Block 001. The property is owned by the City of Torrington, is 11.95 acres in area, and is located in an R6 residential zone. The current use of the property is as recreation other outdoor activities in the zoning regulations in the table of uses, section 3.1, subsection 6.99. There is no proposed change of use associated with this application. A site plan approval is required for the proposed construction activities on site for the new skate park, revisions to the existing basketball court and other site improvements. A plan set has been submitted titled Elise Bessie Skate Park and Basketball Court, 277 Winthrop Street, Torrington, Connecticut, 06790 by New Line Skate Parks, Inc., Edgewater, Florida, dated March 13th, 2024, revised to June 7th, 2024, 36 sheets. Other staff comments, economic development. This application was not referred to the Economic Development Office for comment. Assistant Planner, <clears throat> Nate Nardi Cyrus, Assistant City Planner, offered the following comments on the application, revised to June 12th, 2024. I have reviewed the proposed plans and have the following comment. Landscaping, 
Six trees have been shown for removal, but no replanting plan has been proposed according, according to section 5.11 of the regulations. At least five native trees and 25 shrubs must be replanted along the 200 feet, I think that means, of road frontage on Winthrop Street. Please submit a basic planting plan showing proposed species and planting locations for review. Signs, no signs are proposed for this application. All future advertising signage must obtain a permit from the land use office prior to installation. Conservation, the application was not referred to the Conservation Commission for review. Inland wetlands, an inland wetlands application, I think that means approval, was granted by the commission during their June 11th, 2024 regular meeting. This constitutes a favorable wetlands report. Lighting, exterior pole lighting is currently on site, but it is unclear if these fixtures are compliant with section 5.17 of the regulations. Will this lighting be removed or replaced as replaced as part of this project? Any newer existing lighting must conform with section 5.17 of the zoning regulations. We encourage the use of products approved by the International Dark Sky Association. Architectural Review Committee. This project was not referred to the ARC for review and comment. The City Engineer, Police Traffic Division, Fire Marshal, WPCA, and Building Department all reviewed the project and offered no comments on this application. Conclusion, I recommend approval of site plan application number 1506, 277 Winthrop Street, tax assessor map 124, block 005, lot 001, for construction of a new skate park, revised basketball court, and associated site work with the following conditions and recommendations. One, the applicant shall consult with and follow the recommendations of Assistant City Planner Nate Nardi Cyrus, as outlined in his June 3rd, 2024 application comments, specifically regarding modifications to existing lighting and landscaping plans. Two, an updated landscaping plan was submitted on June 12th, 2024, and is acceptable to the commission. Further minor revisions may, may be approved by staff. Three, in accordance with section 8.4.3 and 8.4.6 of the zoning regulations, the following shall be submitted to the city planner. A, two copies of the full approved plans, including the engineer's stamp and chairman's signature box. B, <clears throat> one, mi one mylar copy each of sheets EC1, drainage, sediment, and erosion control plan, and SP1.01, skate park feature, feature plan for filing with the city clerk in accordance with section 8.4.3.P of the zoning regulations. Each mylar sheet shall bear a chairman's signature box, a copy of the approval letter from the commission, an engineer's seal and live ink stamp. C, mylar sheets shall be filed by the applicant with the city clerk after the signature of the chairman prior to the approval of zoning permits to begin construction. So Jeremy, the approvals for the, the entire site plan with the revised basketball court. Mm -hmm. Will Ray have to come back with another plan? Yeah, we'll do what we'll, you're just showing the layout. Yeah, we'll do a modification just probably with one or two plan sheets. Okay. With the show on the basketball court. Yeah. Okay. All right. And for conversation, we're looking at phase one of the project for the skate park, phase two phase of the two future of the for the basketball court. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other commissioners have any questions? The actual entrance to the park is mid is on major Besson Drive. That is correct. Yeah. All right. Any other comments? No. no. All right, go ahead, Donna. I'd like to make a motion to approve site plan 1506. Applicant, Ray Drew, City of Torrington Public Works Director. Location, Bessie Park, 277 Winthrop Street. Proposal, construct a new 11,000 square foot skate park, revised basketball court, and associated site work. Subject to the following conditions. One, the applicant shall consult with and follow the recommendations of Assistant City Planner Nate Nardi Cyrus as outlined in his June 3rd, 2024 application comments, specifically regarding modifications to existing lighting and landscaping plans. Two, an updated landscaping plan was submitted on June 12, 2024 and is acceptable to the commission. Further, further minor revisions may be approved by staff. Three, in accordance with section 8.4.3 and 8.4.6 of the zoning regulations, the following shall be submitted to the city planner. A, two paper copies of the full approved plans, including the engineer stamp and the chairman's signature box. B, one mylar copy each of sheets EC-1, drainage, sediment, and erosion control plan, and SP-1, 
5.01 skate park feature plan for filing with the city clerk in accordance with section 8.4.3.p of the zoning regulations. Each mylar sheet shall bear a chairman's signature box, a copy of the approval letter from the commission, an engineer seal, and live ink stamp. C, mylar sheets shall be filed by the applicant with the city clerk after the signature of the chairman prior to approval of zoning permits to begin construction. I have a motion to have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, commissioners. And Thanks, thank you for your approval on this project. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item number 6C. 2177 Winston Road, Assessor Map 238, Block 02, Lot 001, Applicant Ned DeBrova, NJY Auto LLC, Proposal Site Plan Application Number 1504, Modification to Previous Site Plan, Approval Number 1341 for Auto Dealer and Repair Use and Associated Site Improvements. Is the applicant in attendance? Yeah. No. no. So, to, uh, just for a brief background on this, this this application is before us because of enforcement. Um, the commission approved a uh, approved approved a site plan back in 2020, and the applicant has done very little. Well, besides along basically along the state road, has done well partially the wrong work, and then very little work on the on the hillside to control erosion or to do what was what was approved on the on the uh, plans that that the commission approved so we've been chasing him for the last couple of years few years with enforcement um this application was to basically reapprove the site plan um in in phases that would be met each phase would be met by a certain date uh to comply with our enforcement orders um it took some revisions to the plans. I am really not sure why the applicant's not here. Uh, so um, I, I have, I'm prepared to read a memo in, but I don't know if we want to be approving this without the applicant here to speak about, speak on behalf of the, mm -hmm. of the application. You want to just Can we just table this? We could, we have a meeting in two weeks, so. Why don't we just table it? Table it. If it doesn't show up again. Yeah. If he doesn't get here by the end of the meeting, we'll go, we'll go right. two weeks. All right, I'll take a motion to table, please. I make a motion to table. You second. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, so move. Thank you. Uh, who did who seconded that? Uh, everybody. everybody. <laughs> so many. Tom did. Tom. Tom. I think Tom made I the motion. No, he gave the motion. Who 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 yelled first? I right, moved on to Moving Jim, on to agenda yeah. item number 6D, 104 Grove Street Assessor's Map, 118 Block 017, Lot 015, Applicant, Anthony DeRosa, Proposal Special Exception, Number 24-04, and Site Plan Application, Number 1509, to waive minimum parking requirements and change use of the property from office use to assembly slash church use. We need to schedule a public hearing the suggested date is July 17th, 2024. Do I have a motion? I can make so move. <laughs> Donna made a motion. Anyone second? I'll, I'll second. Second. Diane. second from Diane Carroll. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Moving on to agenda item number 6E. 856 Main Street Assessor Map 120 Block 006 Lot 011 Applicant Doreen Gagnon Proposal Special Exception Number 24-05 and Site Plan Application Number 1511 Convert first floor from office to a residential unit Convert home to two-family dwelling in an LB zone We need to schedule a public hearing to suggest the date is July 17, 2024 I'll make a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, so moved. Moving on to agenda item number seven, correspondence A, zoning and blight violation update. We all have a list in our packets. Any questions or 
comments on that? No. No. The, there's a lot of activities that are going to start getting looked at, huh? Yeah, there's uh, well, th there's a busy list here. I think, to be honest, uh, we've had to slow down a little bit because because our uh, our assistant, our administrative assistant, has been out for weeks. Yeah. Um, but we're still trying to trying to hit our priority marks here. Where I don't know where I put that. This one. No, the uh, remember that that uh, thing for you to sign that I I carried it down here with me. Oh, the, the forbearance? Yeah, no, we have yeah the forbearance thing. Oh, oh, it's down. It. No, I have it from. I oh, printed it. Oh, I got you. No, I have the original. I had the original oh, copy somewhere. Three. Yeah. Are it's we three. discussing this or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I had. Oh, here it is. Yep. So, um, we had had the chairman. We had Greg and the chairman of Wetlands uh, meet a couple of weeks ago to discuss this with with Nate and I. Um, so the the uh mountaintop trucking recycling yard you it's set way back from winstead road you see this you, there's kind of a small sign there um it has a long enforcement history going back to the early 2000s uh 2005 2006 for wetlands um wetlands came to an agreement with them way back then and more fill has been placed on that in the wetlands on that property mm -hmm. since then um also, for some reason, we have never done uh, a processing approval. So any property that has that processes more than 100 cubic yards of material in a year falls under the same regulations as quarries do. Um, and they've never been before this commission. They have a grandfathered use that goes back years as a, as a quarry, but that doesn't exempt you from doing that two year, every two year approval because your site changes. Um, so uh along the way sort of uh we learned that 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 pack group has an interest in purchasing that property for 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 future development um what we wanted to see was uh, originally before we had learned about this the the the, the pack group involvement we wanted uh mountaintop trucking to come in with a restoration plan for wetlands and and a two year two year permit from this commission uh, when we learned about the pack group situation, what we said was, you know, we'll we'll come, we'll try to come to some agreement as long as mountaintop trucking doesn't bring any more uh, material onto the site because there's piles in there, there's piles everywhere of things that need to be processed. Jeremy, is this up on the Winston Road behind the pump place you're talking about? Yeah, yep. All okay. the if you're heading towards Winston, it's all the way up on the right. Yeah. Okay. When I was on inland wetlands, we we went in there and did site walks. Yep. Yeah. So you remember that, right? Yeah. So, Absolutely. Yep. So um, we decided in the best, best best interest of maybe getting a future development on that property that we'd come to an agreement that uh, with with corporation council and with the two commissions that a mountain top doesn't bring any more material in. They process what's there, um, and by next year, uh, you know they draw down. Basically, they draw down through next year. Um, by next year, there's got to be a decision on either uh, transferring the property to Pack Group, or or Mountaintop coming in with a restoration plan and and uh, an application before this commission. A re restoration plan to wetlands and an application for this commission for continued processing. Um, so one or the one of or the other has to happen. Um, regardless, even if Pack Group buys the property, the wetlands have to be restored, the filled wetlands. Um, so that basically that's all outlined in this forbearance agreement. Uh, and I, I think we needed to have a conversation as a, as a commission in order to allow Greg to sign the, to sign the document for, uh, you know, on behalf of this commission. Why do we have to wait a year? So we're, we're only, we're only doing this because we're saying you can't bring any more material in, you, you know, we're, we're, we're basically saying right. we're not we're not going to you have to wait a year before you do the restoration plan. Is that what you just said? Right. So we're we're actually giving them till basically September 1st, but in the meantime they still have to draw down everything on the site. So we're giving we're basically giving Mountaintop you know the time to draw down what's on site and then they have to make a decision either they're selling the pack or they're or they're coming in for approvals here to continue working there. One of the two has to happen. 
So they're still during this during this time, they're not allowed to bring any more new material into that site. How was that policed? Good question. <laughs> I mean, if they're in violation of this, we'll go straight to cease and desist orders and you know it's 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 if if they violate this thing, it's done and we go straight we go straight to enforce the like, the top end enforcement. I understand everything that yeah. you're saying, mm -hmm. but I don't understand why you can't do a restoration now and no. now and you know, just say this is what we're going to do. Why do you have to wait a year? That, that, that's just me. Yeah, they're already in violation. Yeah, the exactly. Well, what they're what they're trying to do, what I guess what they're trying, what what Mountaintop's trying to do is avoid hiring engineers when PAC is probably going to hire engineers next year. But that's not our problem. Yeah, right. No, exactly. I mean, the, who, who, who I, I said, I, you know, I said all along, we'll we'll present this. I can't guarantee the commission's agreement. Um, you know, we had we had Corporation Council put it together um, for us to present, and commissions may or may not agree. What is the wetlands? Is it, is it a branch of anything? It's the whole marsh for the for the Still River. It's that whole marsh. I mean, that's an important mm. component. Yeah, and we're talking. Um, that's I mean, across the street from Haynes. Where right. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I I really am guessing here, but it's probably a half an acre, quarter to half an acre of filled wetlands back there. I mean, I think that my opinion is they have they have known they've been in violation for many years. I mean, yeah. When, and when, wetlands when, isn't. A when when you look at the at the agreement, there's a there's a whereas there that starts it in October 15, twenty thirteen, and then we ends up at November eighteenth, twenty twenty three. So there's ten, ten nothing was there, done in those in, in those years. Yeah. Okay, and was that because was that is that in the, uh, I, honestly, that, could, we, you, could we look at that as as some sort of indi indication of bad faith on their part? Yeah, it, I mean, it, 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 it seems like it, yeah. it must at least approach that. If you want my opinion on this, I think it was more of an out of sight, out of mind for the for the city enforcement too. Well, that's kind of what yeah. I'm trying to get at. Yeah. How much was them, and how much how much was there was still fifty fifty. There there was still a, an agreement, a legal agreement through a court. With with the wetland commission for them to do things and not do things, and they did more wetlands filling. Yeah. So, so why is it that the wetlands was not policing them better? I just know it's way back from the road. I just don't think anybody like you got it. You oh, got to get you got to you got to like ask permission. It's not something you can see from the street. If you want to go in there, you got to call Danny Stoughton and say, "I need to get in there to look but at if this." But it's important to the wetlands. They should have made the effort to get in there to look at it. I agree. And well, it came up when I was the wetland official. <laughs> Does so, it, does it does it give Mountaintop a better a better chance at 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 getting rid of it and 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 who is who's coming in the pack group? Pack group. Or, I mean, is that is that is that the is that what's behind the agreement? Just yeah, the, a little more time to clean it up so well, that they can so that it's more acceptable. If, if I'm being completely honest, pack group's driving this. Oh, okay. Driving this agreement. Because they want it cleaned up so it's be all be all set. They don't want to. They don't want to have to inherit mm -hmm. the total mess. Right. Yeah. So what, so they, at the end of the day, you know, you maybe want to cut them a little slack because we'd probably much rather in the end have PAC Group own this property, which would be much better stewards of the property. So. But it, yeah. But it doesn't have to be. You know. What for the restoration? I, right. Yeah. I don't. I think you should three months. Yeah. Well, so, so, so I, I, I think, I think the thing is, Pack Group will work a restoration into their construction plans, right? Yeah, but that's not a guarantee that they're going to buy. There's not. That's why we gave that. That's why we gave that date. Because so, if they don't, so, then then Mountaintop's responsible for the whole thing. So, in my opinion, yeah. Pack's not even in this agreement. You yeah. have to worry about who the owner is now. Yeah. And if he wants it marketable, he should be working diligently exactly. right now to get yeah. it marketable. Except yeah. you got somebody who's looking at it. It's it's you're you're walking a fine line, trying to trying to get somebody to buy it, or not buy it. And Pack Group has, has a great history in town, so there's still no guarantee they're going to buy it. Right. Well, um, no, but then we have the other avenues to go after. I guess at the end of the day, the wetlands have to be restored. Period. Yeah, regard by by one party or the other. Yeah. And do we know the time frame of that? Like, as the wetlands put, given their input on what it time wise it would take to clean up that? 
uh, I think that's really up. Well, it's not up to the applicant, but it's, but it's up to the applicants, um, experts mm -hmm. to, you know, to, to give them that, to give us that information. So you're saying the wetlands were filled in? Not, not like in one shot, but I think they just slowly expanded right. in areas over the years while they were bringing material in. So, it, so it is restorable though, the wetlands. I mean, it's not going to be to the to the quality it was before. Then but what's in it? Like, what is the it's 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 just gravel and you know it's process. Which is could be could have been contaminated. I I have no. It's it's a recycling yard, so I don't know the source of the the, the material they're bringing That's important in. Important too. Yeah. What's in that stuff? Right. It's be it's it's like like random material being brought in for reprocessing. Are we talking from you know old garages? Are we talking mm -hmm. from? Old yeah. No, it's all uh, it's all. It's from it's asphalt, concrete, other excavations. When mm -hmm. I was on inland wetlands, that's what they're. But they're not bringing in construction debris. It's just hard aggregate. Mm -hmm. But asphalt could be from old gas stations, right? Yeah, I mean it's no. concrete. It could, it could be from any source, I guess, right? Yeah. But in my opinion, our commission should not worry about how much money someone's spending for engineering fees right. or any yeah. of that stuff. I just get the job done, give them three months or whatever the number is. And they're the owners, or they're the property owners. I don't care if there's a contract because they could put an option on it for ten years. Mm -hmm. And then what are you going to do? Right, right. And then and and we're, you know, we're still we're, the time the time frame. I think is the, is is what we're talking about. But we we are leaving. If it doesn't materialize, we're still leaving Mountaintop on the hook to do this. We're basically just giving them a a reprieve for a certain amount of time. You know, while they clean up the property and then transfer it to PAC, which no, there is no guarantee they do that. But, but like I said, PAC's the one driving this. So, but at least to the engineering plan. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is summertime in the fall. Yeah. Yes. Good exactly. time oh, to accomplish. It's snowing, it's icy. We don't do yeah. that. You know. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yep. That's right. my. Opinion. Yeah, and also we we were kind of. I didn't get a legal opinion on this, but we're back and forth on whether she, we should have gone into executive session for this. This this isn't a legal this isn't a legal discussion for us. Right. It could be a it could be a um a real estate you know transaction that but this they asked for this so you know they they kind of brought it out so we don't have to go into executive session. And this was done right by Mike Mastro. It was yeah yeah on our behalf. Yep. Just based on based on the discussions that we had with both PAC and with the with, with the commission chairman. So if it's not signed tonight, then you can go back to the council to say this is it's not it's it's not even council, it's just between the, the it's it's enforcement. So it's between our two land use commissions. And you can counter obviously that agreement and say this is Yeah, this this is actually right. This is this is what this is what we came up with as a as yeah. a you know. You wanna read that this, in? This, well, too in depth. it's pretty in depth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can, I can, I can read it in. Well, it's up to you guys. I think we should counter back and say a shorter amount. Of Actually, time. it's only, yeah. it's only two pages. Yeah. That's what I think. That's my opinion. Yeah, in my opinion too. Okay. It's, it's the perfect time of year. Mm -hmm. what, do you, up. what do you want me to? Not a surprise though. What do you want me to? What were you, what are we, what's today? June 12th. I mean, we were, we were. Basically, what we were saying was, we'll give you two. We'll give. Uh, let me. Uh, you know what? I'll at least read that part. I don't need to read all the whereases. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, one AJK shall not bring in any new material into the property. Two, any and all. It says AJK, but it's really mountaintop trucking. Uh, two, any any and all material on the property shall be processed and removed from the property no later than September 1, twenty twenty five. Three, Stoughton and or PAC group shall submit a site plan application no later than September 1, 2025, which site plan must be approved by all necessary city boards or commissions prior to any conveyance of the, pres of the premises from AJK to PAC group. Four, should AJK and PAC group decide not to go forward with the sale and the purchase of the premises, AJK and or Stoughton shall submit a restoration plan application no later than september 1st 2025 five all work proposed all, all all work proposed to be performed in the filled wetlands area as showed on F, aforesaid restoration plan must be completed or bonded no later than september 31st december 31st 20, 
Uh, six, work on the premises, whether in accordance with the approval site plan or approved restoration plan, must commence no later than December 31st, 2025. Seven, should any of the deadlines not above not be met, the city's agreement to forbear any enforcement action shall be null and void. I have another comment. So it's more than a year, though. No, Pat well, let, let's, let's just back up for a minute. Number one, AJK shall not bring any new material onto the property. Not saying mountaintop, though. It, well, AJK is mountain. I understand okay. that. It's not saying. So they're not bringing it, but you are, and you okay. are, and you are, and you are. It should say, are. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no new, but no from anyone from any source. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Because that's a huge loophole. Yep. Yeah. There's a lot of loopholes there. And it's more than a year. And it was December 20, yeah, exactly. 2025. It's a year and a half. Right. You know, and even there, I don't know. Is there periodic uh inspections of the site to see if stuff is leaving versus coming in and should it be inspected for contamination i right that well you, you should only be being you should only be bringing in clean fill clean well, clean sure. material yeah right? i mean ultimately yeah because there's you know gas stations being demoed the environmental people are already hopefully taking well, care of that true. True. Hopefully. Well, that's the first thing you said, Greg, was uh, how do you, who's enforcing this? Right. Even if we, even if we just said, okay, good, go. Uh, from between now and September 1st, 2025, who's going to make sure that I would, they just keep doing what they right. did for the 10 years when they did all? I would say, I mean, to me, I would say just knowing, knowing our schedules, I would say inspections no more frequently than once every 15 days or something, you know, twice that works perfectly. Twice monthly inspections. There's no, I, I would say no more frequently than that. I guess the intent is to eliminate all that material that's on site so pack group ends up with an empty site at the end of the day well, basically what mountaintop said is is it's not our intention to process any new material i said well great draw it down and you know you got to someone's got to do a restoration plan that was our conversation with them someone's got to do a restoration plan first we got to draw the material down before you before we restore the, you know the, the wetland areas because there's piles of stuff all in the is way it processing there yeah yeah, brings material in, processes, trucks it out. Yep. But there's <laughs> material everywhere in there. My concern, though, is also the other quarry that's at four in there. How many violations on that that we've seen in the last few months? Right. So mm -hmm. I'm not confident. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'd be in our best interest in all, all of us is to get out of Stoughton's hands and into PAC Group's hand if it works out. Say again, Tom. I said it would be in all of our interests to get it out of Stoughton's hands and into Pack Group hands. Sooner than later, though. Well, I yes. Mean, I mean, that being said, you know, and what comes to mind in my mind is Pack Group is driving this. Yes. Agreement. So yes. you know what, Pack Group, you buy it today. You put an agreement in place with Stoughton yeah, that and get you're responsible to remove X, Y, and Z at the end of X yeah. time period. Yeah. Like I said, you, we probably have a better better uh, ability to get PAC group to do it quicker and sooner than you would start. With. So, yeah. you know, like I say, it's in our interest to get PAC group to take, to make the deal, well, especially if yeah, they're driving the deal. I'm, I'm sure from a business standpoint, PAC doesn't want to be stuck spending a bunch of money cleaning up, cleaning up the property. Yeah, I understand that, but that could also reflect in the price, which, you know, we don't have Spend a it does it happens every day. Yep. Yeah. You know, I mean, what's gonna wind up happening is Pat is even if even if Pac bought the property, you know, mountaintop trucking would be in there doing 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 the cleanup work to get yes. the to get the property ready to be developed. You know what I mean? Yes. So because you know, we still gotta get the piles out and then and then get the wetlands wetland areas restored. Well that's I mean that's how they want to do I mean the 
The only difference is if we want it out quicker, it just doesn't get processed there. Truck it out of there and bring it somewhere else to be processed, you know? Well, that's my opinion is you got to shorten up the time frame for them to restore it. Or <laughs> have them renegotiate with PAC Group and say, mm -hmm. here's the price, you take it as it is. Yeah. How did Magistrali come up with these dates? Oh, they, they, we're we're the ones that came up with them. He oh, just he okay. just yeah he just typed it up. Okay. You know we were just trying to find we were trying to find a. Yeah. Do you think it's going to take a year to get that site cleaned? Uh, actually, they wanted longer. They wanted until the end of 2025, and we said, "How about September?" <laughs> so so it was September to get the site cleaned up. Well, to get not not just get the well yeah it so it wasn't just get the site cleaned up it was to have an application. From one, from one or the other by September first, uh, of next of, of, next of next year. Yeah, yep. And and the action on that application done by the end of next year. Because that's when they think it's going to. How long it's going to take them to get it off? I mean, we're giving them if they come in on September one, we're giving them three months to both get a <laughs> to get an approval and clean the site up, or, or uh, whatever you know, restore the site. Okay, let me ask you this: Does anybody have an as built on the property right now of what's out there and whatever? No. Okay. Then we need an as built to find yeah. out where the location of every single pile is and what's going on and where the wetlands are and how much has been encroached. Mm -hmm. We have an old, we have, actually, Nate had to take an old plan and try to superimpose things off of our GIS to figure it out. Perfect. Yeah. You take the old one with the yeah. new as built, you overlay them, see what the, the um, encroachments are, and then you figure it out. And then you say, okay, how are you going to resolve all these problems? We want a restoration plan by September first of this year. Or so, when so if I understand it, you want you want that you would want that as built attached to this. You know, you, you'd want that on there because so that's yeah, the as built plus how yeah. you're going to clean it up and yeah. what's the restoration. Yeah, that yeah. should yeah. Uh, yeah that should be part of this yeah. agreement. Exactly. Yeah. There's no reason why they couldn't get us a plan by September first this year. Because no one even knows what's yeah. out there. Right. I how the hell can you make sense. a decision? I like. I like I like uh, Tom's suggestion, Sep September first, September first of this year. Yeah, we should have a plan in place. We have a plan in place. Yeah. I mean, yeah. is that even too much time? Is can that be done sooner? Well, that, no. That, I mean, that'll take a, a little while, just based on what the engineers' time frames have been. You know, the the engineers have have been pretty pretty behind. Right. So, but we need to know what's out there. I don't think so. By yeah, I mean, uh, you know, assuming assuming any engineer could get that much work done by September one. Who's kind of so, yeah. This is yeah. open forum. Right? Yeah. So, um, I I don't know. I you know in the in the end we said you know. We will put this together and we'll present it to the commissions and see where we go from there. Uh, do, do we have any other thoughts on on time frames? Otherwise, I throw out the September first, and uh, when we get to that date, if it doesn't work, then we move from there. But at least we have a date we're working towards. Okay. You know, twenty twenty four. Right. Well, you know, that's 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 what we're saying though, is is get it get the plan in place and maybe we'll give you a little more time yes, to figure exactly. out who's, who's, at least who's we see movement. The, who's gonna do the physical work? Um I I you know, the, again, this was just an estimate by 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 Nate too, but you know, he was trying his best to to outline the new kind of plume of material on the property versus the old the old plan that was done back in two thousand five, six, whatever you would it was. I think that the wetlands commission would ask for the as built. If they're yeah. encroaching into the wetland, so wetland, so we're go, we're going first. They haven't even seen this yet. Right. I mean, Jay, Jay, the chairman talked with us about it, but right. the rest of the commission hasn't even seen this yet. I was hoping they'd squeeze it into their meeting last night, but they didn't. That would be their next. That's meeting. like if someone comes in with forty acres of land. I'm going to do a subdivision. Could you approve it? Well, where are your plans? Don't worry about it. I'll bring them in another two months. Yeah. Mm. Well. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Would you know, we, I would we let that go? No. I I said this is a very this is a very odd request, but you know. Well, right now it's conjecture is what we're talking about. Yeah. As mm -hmm. far as a plan, you know, I mean, as far as 
whether whatever PAC group is thinking about doing. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want this to turn into a precedent either, where where every large violator is going to get an agreement with us. You know. Right. But I mean, at least it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. People are talking about it. Right. Getting yeah. together, trying to figure out what's going on. Right. Yeah. How to clean it up. I mean, of course, I don't know if that's just a delay tactic to get out of enforcement or if it's, well, you know, I. Well, we'll you know, get until September 1st and we'll know. Exactly. So mm -hmm. they come forward. Well, yeah. So that's, you know, making them do a little work yep. this year is, is sort of like an act of good faith. If you're, if you're yeah. saying no, then, then, you know, then we go to we, enforcement. We don't do this and we go back to enforcement, you know. And what's that? hundred fifty a day for the forever. Well, if we get to that point, we haven't we haven't quite gotten that far yet. But yeah, but not not only for wetlands, but for for zone for zoning as well. Yeah, wetlands has a cap, but you know zoning does not. Okay, works for me. Jeremy, do you want me to read this um, motion for? We we didn't have this the last time, right? What is the, that? Uh, the hotel there oh no so we did we did you we did you kind of crafted a motion and i and i oh. based on that we just didn't i didn't have we the, just have to sign it yeah i didn't have the oh. uh the paperwork done for it oh okay yeah, i think you you kind of crafted a motion off yeah, my memo we all right we're good yeah all right moving on to agenda item number eight adjournment the time is 8 22 <laughs> thank you so moved. Second. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you, everyone. Aye. Thank you. So moved. And then this Have a good night. You too, Tommy. You too. You have to